Assalamualaikum. This is my first video on oil and gas accounting. In this video, we are going to talk about operations of oil and gas industry, upstream accounting and reporting, and exploration methods and procedures. But before I start this session, I truly appreciate the time and effort put in by Nabiya Khan in making these awesome slides. Oil and gas industry operations are classified as upstream and downstream operations. Upstream oil and gas operations are also referred as exploration and production activities. We also call them as E and P activities. And these include exploration, acquisition, drilling, developing, and production activities. Independent oil and gas companies like Aramco in Saudi Arabia, Sokar in Azerbaijan, Brunei Shell Petroleum in Brunei, ONGC in India, JPEX in Japan are involved primarily in only upstream activities. Traditionally, downstream operations include transportation, refining, marketing, and distribution activities. Let us talk about downstream operations. Downstream operations are delineated as midstream and downstream op operations. Midstream operations include activities like shipping and storage of oil and gas away from the point of production while downstream refers to refining, marketing, and distribution of processed products. Oil and gas companies like Chevron, Occidental, and Enbridge are integrated. Similarly, ExxonMobil and Kinder Morgan are integrated and they are involved in upstream activities as well as midstream and or downstream activities. Let us now talk about upstream accounting and reporting. The starting point in this regard is to first identify the activities to be classified as oil and gas producing activities. The classification of oil and gas activities as upstream and uh, oil and gas producing activities and midstream or downstream producing activities is of special significance in accounting as the specialized financial accounting and reporting rules and standards that apply only to upstream operations are quite complex. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has defined the following activities as oil and gas producing activities. The search for crude oil, including 
condensate and natural gas liquids in their natural states and original locations, the acquisition of property rights or properties for the purpose of exploration and or production of oil and gas, the construction, drilling and production activities necessary to remove oil and gas from natural reservoirs, including lifting the oil and gas to the surface, gathering, treating, field processing and field storage. By the end of 2008, the SEC modified the definition of oil and gas producing activities to include the extraction of saleable hydrocarbons in the solid, liquid or gaseous states from oil sands, shale, coal beds or other non-renewable natural resources which are intended to upgrade it into synthetic oil or gas and activities undertaken with a view to such extraction. The Securities Exchange Commission excludes the following activities from oil and gas producing activities. Transportation, refining or marketing of oil and gas. Activities relating to the production of natural resources other than oil or gas. Or natural resources from which synthetic oil and gas can be extracted and production of geothermal steam. Let us now talk about exploration methods and procedures. First of all, the oil and gas companies conduct a reconnaissance survey and when as the reconnaissance studies have indicated the potential for oil and gas accumulation, then the second step is to conduct seismic studies. We will talk about seismic studies later, but first of all, let us talk about geological and geophysical techniques. To find oil reserves below the earth's surface, geoscientists use two techniques, geological and geophysical. Geological geologists identify surface rocks and minerals and understand the environment in which they were formed. They study the rocks and minerals to determine the potential existence of petroleum. bearing subsurfaces formations. They use different methods to study the surface such as aerial photography, satellite imaging, imaging radar and topographical and geophysical mapping. A geologist, a geophysicist use geophysical methods that involve subsurface studies. Such studies are done to identify the physical characteristics that are indicative of oil and gas reservoirs. These studies aim at locating and detecting the presence of subsurface structures and determining their size, shape, depth, and physical properties. It includes several methods like gravitational studies, magnetic and electromagnetic evaluation, and seismic studies. Two points are worth mentioning here, area of interest It is a detailed geological and geophysical study covering a small area and a successful well is a well that finds reserves in economically producible, producible quantities. 
we would specifically talk about seismology as it is one of the most important tools in oil and gas exploration today. Seismology provides detailed information about subsurface structures by recording the reflection of sound waves or surface formations. Innovations in seismology like 3D seismic studies have significantly increased drilling success rates. Another innovation called time lapse or 4D seismic helps in determining the reservoir properties like movement of fluids, temperature and pressure change in response to production. This helps to anticipate the movement of oil, gas and or water before production starts. Through 3D and 4D seismic technology, success rates in unproved areas have increased approximately from 10% to 60%. Let us now talk about the steps that are generally executed in the process of finding oil and gas. First, a broad geological and geophysical re reconnaissance work is done to identify an area of interest. Based on the results obtained in step 1, a lease or an option to lease may be obtained. Next, detailed GNG work is done to evaluate the area of interest. Data gathered in 1 and 3 are analyzed. To select a drill site, further analysis of available data and possibly more seismic studies are done. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the GNG techniques cannot guarantee that oil or gas exist in economically producible quantities. The only definite way to determine the economic viability of petroleum reservoir exists is to drill wells. Based on data obtained during and at the end of the drilling process, a decision is made as to whether there is sufficient oil and gas to justify completing the well. If well has sufficient oil, well is completed and production is started. If there is insufficient oil, then another drill site or the lease is selected or the lease is abandoned and the entire process to select another area of interest is repeated. So this completes this session on an introduction to oil and gas accounting. Remember, effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity, which cultivates wisdom. If you have any question regarding this session, then please don't hesitate to ask in the comment box or by email and inshallah I will reply you back. Happy learning.